Hello, welcome. In this first video in a series of three, I will teach you how to ruche, a dimensional technique commonly found in Baltimore album quilts. And in the next two videos, I'll show you how to form that ruche strip into two different beautiful flowers that you can add to a quilt or a hat or whatever you like. Let's begin. The first thing I need to do is cut a one inch strip on the straight of grain, not the bias. The longer your strip, the bigger your flower. I usually choose to cut a 40 inch strip since that's the width of my fabric. For the next part, I'll need spray starch and a one half inch bias tape maker. Now let's bring it over to the ironing board and spray the strip with the starch. This is technically not necessary, but it makes the whole process a lot easier. Sometimes it can be difficult to load the strip into the bias tape maker. You can either cut the leading end of the strip at a 45 degree angle or just use a pin to work it through the opening. Now you'll run it through the bias tape maker, pressing as you go. Make sure to put your iron on the cotton setting and use the steam so the strip will hopefully stay pressed. After the strip is pressed, it's time to mark it. A Micron Pigma pen works great for this. It makes a mark that I can see, but the ink doesn't bleed through to the front. With the wrong side of the strip facing up, I'll line up my strip on my cutting mat and make a mark on every inch mark on the top of the strip and every half inch mark on the bottom. I like to give myself a tail of about a half an inch or so on each end. Now choose a good sturdy needle with an eye that's easy to thread. I like to use an embroidery needle for this, but you can use whatever you use for basting. You will also need to choose a nice strong thread that matches your fabric as closely as possible. I'm going to use a contrasting color though so you can see what I'm doing. Either cotton or polyester thread works well for this and you only need a single strand. I begin basting my strip by burying my knot and starting at the dot closest to one end. Then I'll use a running stitch to travel to the nearest dot on the other side of the strip. I only need about three stitches to get there. Using bigger stitches makes a fluffier flower. I like fluffy flowers. Now loop your thread over the edge of the strip and sew with a running stitch to the next dot. This picture will help you see what I mean. Continue to baste in this zigzag pattern until you get about six petals. A petal is the distance from one dot to the next on the same side of the strip. So from here to here. At this point, you'll want to gather your strip. It's tempting to do all of the stitching first and all of the gathering second, but it's really easy for your thread to break from all of the strain put on it from the gathering. Then you have to start over, then you're mad at yourself. So base six petals, then gather six petals, repeating until you reach the end of the strip. When you gather your strip, do it somewhat loosely so the edges of the petals are rounded. If the strip is gathered too tightly, the petals end up looking pointy. At the last dot, take another running stitch or two to bring your thread to the middle of the strip. When all of the petals are gathered the way you like them, take a double stitch at this stopping point. It's important to note here that strips of different fabrics will ruche to different lengths, even if they are all originally cut to the same length. Don't worry about this unless you're making multiple flowers and you want them to all end up the same. In that case, your shortest strip will set the standard for how big your flowers will be. Join me in the next video where I'll show you how to make your ruched strips into beautiful flowers. And as usual, click the subscribe button below to see more from Loopy Tulip Designs and go to my website at loopytulips.com where you can find Baltimore Blooms, a fun new project where you can put your mad ruching skills to work. The link will be in the show notes below. Thanks a lot and see you next time.